Today we are going to explore what is left of Pitcher, Oklahoma. This is a super fun site that includes Pitcher, Oklahoma, Treese, Kansas, and Cardin, Oklahoma. A super fun site is an area designated by the EPA to be tremendously dangerous and poisonous and hazardous to human health. Pitcher, Oklahoma was founded in 1913. Lead and zinc ore were discovered on a gentleman named Harry Crawfish's mining claim and mining began. This town site developed overnight around the new workings and was named Pitcher in honor of O.S. Pitcher, the owner of Pitcher Lead Company. The city was incorporated in 1918 and in 1920 it had a population of 9,726. The population peak occurred in 1926 with 14,000 residents and was followed by a gradual decline due to the decrease in mining activity, leaving Pitcher with only 2,500 by 1960. What you see here in the background that look like mountains are giant chat piles. Chat piles are the leftovers from lead and zinc ore mining. It's very fine gravel. Uh, once the mining process is complete and they've dug this at, from out underground and they've taken the minerals they want, they leave these giant piles. Um, these piles were much larger at one time and there was even more of them. Uh, these piles have been found to contain trace amounts of lead, zinc, ore, and I believe cadmium. Here's some old vintage footage of Pitcher, Oklahoma when there were still more residents. People played on these chat piles. Children biked on them, sledded down the chat piles. Um, just completely full of lead dust. The fine dust blows in the air and gets breathed in and absorbed into your body. Um, people rode bikes on them. They rode dirt bikes on them. Nobody was ever worried about them. In addition, there's a lot of creeks and water around this area. And as the water flows down those piles, it flows into these creeks and streams. In addition, rainwater fills the mines and comes up through the ground. And there's acidic water that enters the creeks and tr streams that turns the water red. In 2008, there was an EF4 tornado that destroyed a lot of the homes that were left in Pitcher and caused its last residents to move out and leave. Oh my gosh, there's a tornado right there, right there. You look at that, and then you get in that bathroom. See it? It is right there on the ground. You see it? Yeah. It is right there, it's on the ground. It's just a little bit to the south of us, about 400 yards. Oh my God. So not only was Pitcher, Oklahoma um, poisoned, the water was poisoned, lead dust was blowing through the air, there were also uh, collapses and sinkholes opening up and swallowing homes, and it was hit by a devastating, devastating tornado. On May 10, 2008, there were eight confirmed deaths, possibly including one child and many other people injured. The tornado first touched down near Kansas and the Oklahoma border which is right near uh, Pitcher, Oklahoma just a few miles up the road and it went eastward. It struck Pitcher causing extensive damage and hit at least 20 city blocks. The houses and businesses were destroyed or flattened. At least 150 people were injured in Pitcher alone. At the time, there was a plan to vacate the city. 
the federal government decided against aid to rebuild homes, and buyouts continued as previously scheduled, with people being assisted in relocation. The governor of Oklahoma sent National Guard troops as well as emergency personnel to assist the hardest hit area in Pitcher. Loss of power from the tornado forced the city to go on a boiled water notice. Staff from the Oklahoma Rural Water Association arrived to assist. Since the utility's testing equipment was destroyed by the storm with an emergency generator to supply power. So this town was undergoing since probably the 1980s, the EPA, uh, when it had declared this town a Superfund site and determined that it was toxic, uh, they had been making efforts to try and clean up the lead and, and do some kind of abatement to make it safe to live here. Uh, they spent hundreds of millions of dollars and they were never successful. Um, at one point, it was decided that at least 50% of the kids in their school in Pitcher had some sort of learning disability and had high blood levels or lead blood levels in their system, which of course caused the learning disabilities. Um, despite all this, there were a lot of residents who did not want to leave and uh, wanted to stay, refused buyout. The community was kind of torn between people holding signs that wanted the buyout and wanted to take their children and family to safer places and people who wanted to keep their families here. Um, the lady here in this newspaper article you see, and you'll see her again, I believe is the same lady that was on those chat piles with her children playing in the earlier footage. The year after the tornado struck in 2009, the city ceased operations as a municipality. All of the residents had been given federal checks to relocate, and the city was just considered far too toxic to be habitable. On the last day, all the residents met one final time at the school auditorium to say goodbye. Here's some uh, ads from the 1920s from Pitcher. Uh, your eye has struck it rich. Uh, there's advertisements to buy stock in the mining operations in Pitcher. At one time it was a bustling town. A former resident described uh, Pitcher as a place that was so busy you could hardly walk on the sidewalks and you'd have to get on the street and walk. The uh, sidewalks were just too crowded in front of the stores. I believe they at one time even had three theaters. Um, here's some articles about investigations. Um, cleanup records were seized. They were investigating possible mismanagement of super funds, um, articles about buyouts. They tried all along since the 1980s until the early 2000s uh, to try to decide whether they were going to be able to clean this up or whether it was just far too toxic. Um, there were also some articles there about uh, the water source being poisoned. There were people that swam in the creeks before it was fully known what was going on here and when they swam in the creeks they'd come out and their skin would be colored orange and they thought they were sunburnt when in fact it was the acidic water uh, containing zinc ore and lead and cadmium that was soaking their skins and skin and burning it. Here are a couple of the last remaining homes in picture. Um, they did have private property signs, so I decided to respect that. This land was actually also originally Quapaw Indian land. The Quapaw Indians were forcibly relocated from Arkansas uh, to this area, and a lot of the people that lived in Pitcher at one point were had the homes, but they were on a lease, leased from the Quapaw Indians, so the actual ground they were on were still owned by the Indian tribe. There are still Quapaw Indians in the area today, and they want this land cleaned up and basically returned to them. If you go into Pitcher, you might want to be careful because I did notice there were some tribal police, Quapaw Indian police, and one of the apartments near all the vacant homes that we fly over here in a little bit was occupied and one of them was an office for the Quapaw Indian Tribal Police and it looked like um, perhaps wh whoever the police or official is lives in the building across from it and I saw some other vehicles in the area so you might get chased off they may not want you to be on this land poking around a lot of the areas with the mining equipment and chat piles have uh, 
warning no trespassing U.S. government signs on them. And we're going to take a look at these chat piles from an overhead view further on in this video, and we'll also take a look at some of the old mining equipment. Um, there's the old water tower. Uh, near the water tower, there are a couple buildings that look like they may be occupied. One of them was a pharmacy, and the pharmacist in this town was one of the last residents. And he just stayed and kept his pharmacy open, and people who used to live here would come back and buy uh, pharmaceuticals from him at his drugstore. He's kind of a colorful character. If you watch some other documentaries on Pitcher, um, you can find him. But I believe he passed away in 2009 and was said to be the last uh, resident here. You can see all those water sources and creeks and just groundwater above ground and how close that is to those chat piles that contain the toxic lead and other minerals that just soak right down into the water and have spread. Um, at first it was Tar Creek they called it was the Superfund site because the water was being poisoned but in fact that's run off into probably lakes, reservoirs, basins and spread throughout the area. As you see this aerial view looking around you can see how big this area was that contained homes and businesses will continue to fly over because there's more. There was actually two other towns besides Pitcher that were shut down and abandoned as well. Just as far as the eye can see, you can see these deadly chat piles. Off in the distance, in one of these shots, you can see the old school. And uh, most of these uh, blocks, there are a few trailers. If you look real closely when we fly over, there's a few trailers and a few homes here and there. But for the most part, uh, this was all devastated by the tornado, and it was nothing but debris and wreckage. Further along in the video, we're going to also take a look at the abandoned mining museum. Uh, luckily, everything from that museum was moved to the nearby town of Baxter, Kansas, which we'll also take a look at. It's a historic town along Route 66. Pitcher, Oklahoma supplied most of the lead for bullets for World War I and World War II. They actually produced over $20 billion worth of ore between 1917 and 1947. More than 50% of the lead and zinc material used during World War I was produced in this district. At its peak, there were 14,000 miners working the mines and another 4,000 workers working in mining services. Many workers commuted by an extensive trolley system from a far, as far away as Joplin, Missouri and Carthage. Mining ceased in 1967 and water pumping from the mine ceased. The contaminated water from some 14,000 abandoned mine shafts and 70 million tons of mine tailings, so th those are those big chat piles, 70 million tons and 36 million tons of mill sand and sludge remained as a huge environmental cleanup problem. Now this area right over here, I believe, where these buildings sit that we're looking at, you can see that black vehicle near that house, and that um, is one of the tribal, I believe, emergency services vehicles. Um, there's a little tribal office over here, and somebody living in one of those buildings. The former Tri-State Zinc and Lead Ore Producers Association office in this area was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2008. The building was destroyed by arson on April 2015. And we'll take a look at that building as well. There's one of the trailers you see below you that was destroyed uh, in the tornado.
Starting in January of 2011, after the big tornado that hit Pitcher, almost all remaining commercial structures were scheduled to be demolished. Gary Linderman, owner of the Old Miners Pharmacy, said he would stay until the last resident left. By March 2014, standing abandoned buildings, including the Pitcher Carden High School building, a Disciples of Christ Church, the Mining Museum, and a handful of mercantile buildings, as well as numerous abandoned houses, were scheduled to be demolished. So I'm not sure what this building was. It says picture on the front. I'd love if somebody found this video and could tell me what this building was. In 2006, Reuters News Service reported that the government had decided to close Pitcher and relocate all residents. A large part of that was due to the removal of large amounts of subsurface material during mining operations, and many of the city's structures have been deemed in Im imminent danger of caving in. Um, I had read online that if you come here, it's best to probably stay on the roads because of the danger of uh, sinkholes and the ground caving in. I'm not sure how true that was everywhere I walked, which wasn't very many places, but it, it seemed pretty solid, but I guess you don't know if you're standing on top of a sinkhole until it caves in. Maybe that little bit of extra weight from, from a stout short guy stepping on top of it, I might end up being 100 yards in the ground. Uh, the graffiti here is not that good. Daddy got some something or other and something about farts. Later on in the video there's uh, some footage of a train going by and uh, perhaps the people spray painting in that building should maybe go take a look at the train coming from the city and, and maybe it'll give them some uh, creative inspiration on what they should be spray painting on the walls. Here's some of that toxic water. I had a strange feeling walking around here in Pitcher that I really, I got my feet wet a few times and I felt like I really didn't want to soak my feet in the water here. I'm sure it'd be fine just once since the kids used to play on the chat piles and swim in the creek. It probably won't kill me immediately, but uh, I don't know, you really just don't want to soak your feet in the water at a super fun site, I guess. There's an old can of stag beer laying in the ditch in front of those houses we showed earlier. And here's some mining equipment, uh, still near the chat piles. And it doesn't look like it's in use. Um, some of it doesn't look too bad. There's some piece of, uh, pieces of equipment. I'm not sure that there's actually any mining going on anymore. But I flew in for a little closer look so we could see what some of this stuff would have looked like. By the way, if you're watching this video and you have any information on Pitcher, any of the things that, that I'm showing, if you're from Pitcher, Oklahoma, had relatives that lived in this area, please leave us some comments to read on the video. If you're enjoying this video, please subscribe, like, share, and make sure you turn on the notification bell. Now, I was kind of nervous about flying my drone into this area and running into a power line or something and having it fall uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I couldn't go in here probably without getting in trouble, um, being contaminated with lead and heavy metals because it is uh, government property. And also, if you were to walk across here and try to walk across these chat piles, who knows 
if you would hit some kind of air pocket and sink in. Um, all those kids and, and people shown playing on these piles, I was old, always told as a child not to play on giant gravel piles because they can get air pockets in them, and if you step on one, it'll cave in. You'll go in, rocks will cover you over the top, and nobody will save you, and you'll probably perish. In fact, there was a news story about that uh, near me when I was a kid. Some kids were playing on a on a big gravel pile and there's some more of that toxic water you can just see there's surface water all over the place standing right next to this uh, toxic lead mining dust if anybody knows anything about these pieces of a mining equipment and what they would have been doing with those uh, also please leave a comment I'd be interested to get any further information I could about this. Now there's a nearby functioning town uh, called Baxter, Kansas that I mentioned earlier and it's a historic town along Route 66 and at the end of this video that's going to be our last stop and we're going to take a look at their little downtown strip and one of the reasons being because it's right around the corner from Pitcher I can imagine that by showing what that looks like now would give you an idea of what Pitcher would look like if it was still in existence today. Uh, you can see this kind of reddish muddy clay water flowing off the top of these nasty toxic piles. I have no idea what those things are that you're looking at right now. I was kind of curious as to what those are. They look like maybe electronic boxes, part of a power grid. And you can see the reddish kind of color on the edges of all these uh, water puddles. And that, my friend, is toxicity. So yeah, there were people driving across these with dune buggies, people camping on these piles, having picnics. Um, maybe some children were conceived on top of these piles. Lead poisoning at birth. So here we are along the sidewalk that probably would have been bustling at one point. Uh, beyond these fences you cannot cross, that's government property. And there's a structure that was behind those fences that I didn't show, the footage wasn't great, but it was mainly just a foundation. There was stuff all through those areas. This, I believe, is the mining museum that was destroyed by arson. And uh, there's kind of a neat room back here. It looks to be a fireplace. There's some columns. And I'll show it to you in a second. There's this little room back there that kind of has like safe doors with handles on it and some metal ornamentation around the door frame. I really didn't want to walk through any of that water. My feet did get a little mushy in this area. I wasn't in a big hurry to continue to soak my feet in this water though. That probably was a basement. And uh, some of the other towns I'll mention, again, Cardin, Oklahoma, Treese, Kansas, and I think it's pronounced Dote, Dote Hat. I think those are all pretty much abandoned at this point. And Commerce. There may be some people living in some of these, but Cardin, Treese, and Pitcher for sure. Uh, also, Quapaw, which is the headquarters of the Native American nation by that name, um, and also Miami, Oklahoma, which I believe is still occupied. I bet a bun bunch of the former residents of Pitcher and Cardin probably live in, in Miami. I think maybe if you're from this area, though, you might say Miami or some, something weird like that. So you could kind of smell fire in this building uh, back in this room. I'm not sure if this was a safe where they kept valuables for the mining museum or, or what exactly this 
part was. Um, pretty sturdy part though. The rest of the building was destroyed by arson and fire and that was still standing. And here we are in an abandoned gas station right outside Pitcher, Oklahoma. Kind of near Trees, Kansas. And we're going to take a look at this and see what's left. Kind of looks like a booth seat that's in there. And there's a couple other um, parts of the same kind of seating, I believe, that are flipped down on the inside. There's an old mattress. Probably somebody dumped some stuff there. And there was an outbuilding out back, some sort of storage, maybe for tools or equipment. Think there's any gas still left in there? There's nothing on it. Yeah, it's a truck, I can see it. Instapix, that's not very uh, old. I don't think they've had those very long. It says, Trees, Kansas Historical Marker, dedicated to the formal, former residents. The city of Trees, located a half mile west of Highway 69, was founded on February 26, 1918, as a result of mining operations in the early 20th century. During the prime mining industry production, Trees, neighboring Pitcher, Oklahoma, and several other nearby towns combined had a population of over 20,000 people. In the 1920s, this region, commonly known as the Tri-State Mining District, was the world's largest producer of zinc and lead, supplying ore for ammunition used during World Wars I and II. Ore produced declined rapidly in the 1960s, as did the city's population. Treese was within the Cherokee County, Kansas OU-4 Treese Superfund site, and adjacent to the Oklahoma OU-4 Tar Creek Superfund site, which were established due to contamination from historic mining activities. In 2010, thanks to the persistent efforts of local residents, city officials, and state and federal legislators, residents of Trees were offered voluntary relocation assistance from the Trees Relocation Assistance Trust, a state public trust funded by the United States Environmental Protection Agency in the Kansas Department of Health and Environment. The buyout was offered to remove residents from the risk of sinkholes caused by subsidence of underground mines and exposure to regional contamination from waste remaining from past mining operations. The buildings and streets were removed in 2012 and the restrictions placed on the deeds to prevent the properties from being occupied in the future. Trees was officially dissolved as a city May 9, 2012 and, for will ever, and will forever live on in the hearts of its former residents. Erected by the Trees Relocation Assistance Trust, Trust, a state public trust, Gene Bickle, Bicknell, Betty McBride, Jim Dahman, John Delmont Jr., Jr., and Eddie Hamilton. And next we will be on our way to Baxter, Kansas. Here's a church. It looked like somebody might have been occupying that still. It almost looked like somebody lived in that church. But that was the old trees church and here we are in downtown Baxter, Kansas. The theater looked pretty cool. They had a lot of stuff that it looked like they tried to preserve. Uh, Route 66 heritage. They had a museum here. Of course uh, due to the epidemic everything was closed and I could not go inside. That place uh, 
not for the public. It said it had been turned into some sort of learning center. Uh, maybe people on field trips learning about Route 66, local students. Not sure there was Apple computers all over the place inside there. Cool place to go, though, looks like. But we're going to take a look a little bit at downtown Baxter so you can, again, you can see what picture might look like if it were still open today. They probably had a similar look being so close together. They were doing some rehab work at that old Baxter State Bank. Yep. Huh? Okay. Okay, what kind are we going to pick? Put one more. We got to think about what kind there is. Read them. Put the Okay, put the third one in. All right. So what kind is there? Um Pepsi. Dr. Dr. Pepper, Pepper A and W, Sprite. Sprite and Coca-Cola. And the third one is the Campus. Okay. So which one are you gonna try? Uh, I want Sprite. Okay. No? Let's try a different one. Did they fall through? Maybe. Oh here. Oh let me try again. If it's off, it may, may not, not let us do any of them. He turned off his power probably. Yeah, he probably did. Ah, dang it. It's okay. Someone left the leaf in there for him. Yeah. That's crap. So, perfect time to mention uh, Americana Explorer. Go over to his channel, check it out, like, subscribe. And this is a, another little Route 66 museum. If you go this way, down Route 66, um, the interstate that kind of follows it, I believe, is 44. You'll see a whole bunch of cool stuff, old retro stuff, old cars. Cool place to drive. Here we are on our way out of uh, Baxter on the way home. I drove all nine hours in one day just to film for a little bit. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe, like, share.